so now if you have completed your load development, you're probably pretty happy with the groups that your rifle is producing. So the next thing that we'd like to take a look at is how to make sure that that, that rifle functions reliably and fires every time you pull the trigger. I can't imagine anything more frustrating, and yes, I've been there, when you finally get the deer of, that, of your lifetime in your sights and you pull the trigger only to hear a click or a pop and no boom. Well, in my experience, most of the misfires and hang fires and failure of fires that I've experienced with my muzzle loaders was a direct result of the cleaning method I used. Now, there's more ways to clean a muzzle loader than you can count. And everybody has their favorite method and their favorite cleaners. Uh, yes, hot water works well. Um, actually, I prefer the moose milk as a powder solvent. It's a combination of water, ballistol, and concentrated detergent. And you can find the recipe for that on the website if you would like to give it a try. The issue is we will clean our muzzle loader barrels with patches on a patch jag until they come out clean and you don't see any powder fouling. Well, that won't quite do it. And flushing hot water through the barrel with your cleaning patch on a cleaning jag I have found doesn't get out all the fouling either. Every rifle barrel, every gun barrel has its own peculiar nooks and crannies where fouling can collect and the cleaning patch on the cleaning jag just won't wipe it clear. When this happens, that fouling that remains inside that gun will absorb both the water or the cleaning solution and the oil that you use for rust protection. It forms a gunky substance almost like tar. And your gun may fire the first few times you shoot it, but the pressures from the gun firing will blow that wet crud back into the flash channel or the nipple and cause an obstruction. And then your cap pops, but the flame can't reach the powder charge and the gun won't go off. Especially if you have a rifle with a patent breech. We've noticed before that the cleaning patch on your cleaning jag will not fit down into the cavity in that patent breech or into the fire channel which connects the nipple to that cavity in the breech. You're going to need to find brushes and cleaners that will get into those areas and remove that fouling. I like to take the nipple out and run the pipe cleaners that are designed to clean the gas tubes of AR-15s and, and those type of guns. These are like a normal pipe cleaner, but they have a phosphor bronze or a heavy plastic bristle incorporated into them. You can work those up from the nipple channel, from where the nipple goes into the bolster, up through that fire channel into that patent breech and clean that area. Now the patent breech itself, if you don't have a scraper that's made to fit in that patent breech, try different size plastic bristle cleaning brushes such as those made for your modern pistols. In my Lime and Great Plains rifle, I found that a 38 caliber brush fit down into that patent breech perfectly and would remove that fouling. Now with all of that fouling gone, you won't have issues of that stuff coming loose while you're firing the gun and blocking the flash channel and causing misfires and hang fires. Now with my flintlock guns, the vent lighters that I like are those that are coned on the inside and allow the main charge to get closer to the priming charge in the pan. Well, my cleaning patches didn't fit into that cone. So after a certain number of shots, I begin to get hang fires. 
And even though I was clearing the vent with a pick, I kept seeing this wet fouling in the pan after shooting the gun. Well, it took me a while because I'm not the broadest person on the world, on the earth, but um, eventually I figured out that fouling was being left in that cone that my cleaning patch wasn't wiping clear and it was absorbing the cleaning solutions and the oils. And after a shot or two, it would blow back into the pan and it would block the flash channel and cause hang fires. So I, I uh, solved that by getting a um, plastic bristle shotgun brush that was a gauge larger. For example, you know, my uh, smoothbore is a 20 gauge. So I used a 16 gauge plastic brush on the end of my cleaning rod and rotating it clockwise so it wouldn't unscrew from the rod. Those little plastic bristles would brush the fouling out of that coned area. And when I discovered that solution, I stopped having misfires in my flintlocks. In fact, I've been to state competitions where I was the only shooter for the entire weekend that never had a misfire or hang fire. So these are the problems that can be caused by improper cleaning. And in my opinion, 95 to 98 percent of the misfires and hang fire problems I've had have been solved by discovering the nooks and crannies in each particular gun and finding brushes, scrapers, or devices to remove that fouling. Now, the other issue that can come up with your percussion guns is you want to oil the bore to prevent rust, but it's important to clear that oil out before you load your first shot of the day. A uh, dry patch will get most of it. Uh, a patch soaked with a little rubbing alcohol will get a lot of it but it won't necessarily clear out the flash channel between the nipple and your patent breech. So I always make a habit of after I've wiped all the oil out of the gun barrel that I can, popping three to four caps while pointing the muzzle in a safe direction at the dust or a blade of grass so that I can see the gas coming from that cap move that dust or that blade of grass. Now this shows two things. It burns out any oil that might be remaining in that fire channel and it also shows me that the nipple is not obstructed with debris from the cap. Now remember when you clean your rifle to also clean the inside of the nipple. Use a pipe cleaner for that and for the little orifice on the bottom, you may be able to clear that with a straight pin or a needle. Now when you clean your barrel, you also need to clean your lock. Take it out of the stock, hold it under the sink faucet with some hot water running over it, and use an old toothbrush to brush off any of the fouling or gunk that might collect there. When it's dry, Oil the rotating parts with gun oil and the sliding parts with a good high pressure gun grease. Now periodically, depending on how much you fire your gun, you may need to completely disassemble and thoroughly clean the lock, say once a year, or maybe once every two years. The first step in doing that is to remove the mainspring. Now you want to use a mainspring vise for this. Don't try to use vise grips or pliers that can scratch the surface of the spring and the spring can break in that area. When you remove that spring, release the tension from the spring device and, and lay the spring aside. Now it may be a good idea to take a photograph of the interior parts of that lock with your phone so you can um, refer to that when you're putting it back together. The shorter of the screws is the one that holds the trigger return spring. Now, when you remove the bridle, watch out for that little fly in the tumbler. It's easy for that thing to fall out and get lost. So you have all the parts removed except for the tumbler and the hammer. Use your bench vise. Open the jaws enough that the tumbler can fit between them loosely and the lock plate rest on top of the jaws. Use a wooden or a brass punch that will fit on top of the square shaft. Don't Use one that's so small it can go down in the hole and damage the threads. Then tap on it with a hammer 
until the tumbler falls free of the hammer. Then once you've cleaned all of the parts, you just reassemble all the little parts in your lock, lubricating the rotating parts with the oil and the sliding parts with the good gun grease. The last thing is to return the mainspring. So put it back in your spring vise, put enough tension on it that you can place the spring back into the holes in the, in the notches on the lock plate and then release the pressure on the spring. Now we've covered the issues involved with cleaning that can cause malfunctions in a percussion rifle, but there are some mechanical problems with some percussion locks that you need to check for if you're having any misfires. One is the hammer being out of alignment with the nipple. Now it could be that the side of the cup on the hammer is striking the side of the nipple, or it could be that the face of that hammer is not flush with the face of the nipple and it's just striking one edge. This can cause your gun to misfire because there isn't enough um, force being dropped onto the cap to make it go off. This is uh, something that can be corrected. The first thing I would try would be a shorter or longer coned nipple that might change the angle that the hammer is in relationship to the top of that nipple. If that doesn't solve the problem, remove the hammer from the lock and have someone heat it and tweak it by bending it slightly until you get that hammer to drop squarely on the face of the nipple. Now, Another problem that can occur, especially when someone has dry fired that rifle a lot, or I suppose it can happen over a period of time just firing the rifle as you normally would, is that the nipple can become flattened or even mushroomed at the hip and the cap won't fit completely down on the nipple. When this happens, you can fire the gun and the nipple, the, the hammer will hit the cap and drive it down onto the nipple, but it may not fire. Um, cocking, recocking the gun and dropping the, you know, pulling the trigger again can now fire the gun because the cap has been fully seated. Well, one way to correct this is to replace the nipple or you can also chuck that nipple into your drill and while you're rotating it, file on it until you file it back down into the proper shape so that the cap will fit and seat completely on the nipple. Now, before you go to this step, double check and make sure you're using the right size cap. If you're putting a number 10 cap on a nipple that's made to fit a number 11, well, that's going to happen. Now, the final issue that I have seen with some cheaply made percussion locks is a weak mainspring, and it may start out being too weak to ignite the cap. You can replace that, or if you happen to know a blacksmith who's knowledgeable in how to retemper the springs, he can retemper that spring and put some strength back in it so that the hammer will strike the cap with enough force to ignite it. Generally speaking, percussion locks usually have few issues. And those issues that do occur, even in the cheaply made locks, can usually be corrected with a little bit of adjustment and the most drastic thing being just heating the hammer and bending it slightly until the uh, face of the hammer does align flush with that percussion nipple. What I'm showing so, you here is a way to practice dry firing your percussion rifle without damaging the nipple. So go down to your hardware store and get a quarter inch tapered sink washer. Place that with the tapered side down over your nipple the washer is thick enough 
to prevent the hammer from striking the nipple when you practice dry firing and it won't flatten the shape of your nipple. Now while we're talking about dry firing, especially if you have set triggers, don't ever snap those triggers with the hammer in the half cock notch. That can damage the half cock notch and it can damage the sear. Always fully cock the hammer and let it drop when you pull the trigger even while dry firing. This will prevent damage to your triggers and the sear in your lock. Using the washer you can safely practice dry firing with your rifle and not do any damage to either the lock, the triggers, or the nipple. So this closes out our masterclass series on muzzle loading percussion rifles. Hopefully you've gained some insight, maybe had some questions answered, or perhaps I've raised questions you haven't thought of yet. In any event, um, I wish you luck with your guns. I hope that you're able to find the most accurate load and solve any issues that may cause any reliability problems. Hopefully you'll have an accurate rifle that goes off every time you pull the trigger. I would like to refer you again back to the website at www.traditionalmuzzleloader.com. Many of the articles there will cover some topics that we've discussed and should answer all your questions. If not, you can find my email address there. Shoot me an email. I'll be happy to discuss it with you. Until next time. Shoot straight, enjoy your rifle, and remember, keep your powder dry.